my research explores how the brain controls metabolism. How does the brain control our blood sugar levels? How does this become defective in diseases such as type 2 diabetes? My lab works on cardiac development, trying to understand how the heart forms the shape that it does and the genes that pattern that process. Working on the big questions such as obesity and type 2 diabetes, any sort of innovation and discovery in that space has the capacity to touch many people around the world at a global level. My lab's all about understanding the neuronal circuitry and how we can hijack that circuitry to develop new drugs to treat these important diseases. 1% of humans will develop a, a cardiac disease. We still want to understand what the genetics are that might be responsible for these disorders. So to do that, we actually use animal avatars, the zebrafish model. The zebrafish has a beautifully patterned heart and there are a lot of similarities, both in the anatomy, but also in the genetics and the genes that are required to pattern the heart. So when we have a cardiac disease that will model a human disorder. Genome editing technologies allow us to get in and mutate a gene. One of the easiest ways to determine whether a gene is playing a role is to break it or remove it. And when that's no longer working, we can see what that does to the heart. And we've actually discovered two completely novel genes um, in that process. They might actually play a role in cardiac development in humans as well. So that's very exciting. Understanding the brain has always been incredibly difficult. Over the past sort of five years, there's been a massive revolution in the tools that we can use to explore the brain, and we can do things that were previously impossible. So for instance, at the University of Melbourne, and particularly within our Department of Anatomy and Physiology, we can identify memories in the brain and we can revoke those memories we can explore at a whole organ level how neurons innervate the liver. These again were things that were previously impossible to do. So we couldn't understand the, con the concept of how the brain could coordinate and control the, the whole body organs. Science is all about taking chances. And when you work alongside world leading scientists, what you find is in fact that everyone doesn't have the most traditional trajectory and people have many different skills. If a child is born with some sort of disorder, the mother immediately says, is it something I've done wrong? And to immediately give an explanation as to what has happened is a very powerful thing to give someone. I believe my research will contribute to that. Think big, be curious, and to always align yourself with the very best researchers. It's very important to always make time for the things you love. I'm a keen guitarist. I've been in many bands over the years, from acoustic folk all the way to heavy metal. <laughs> Music and science have very similar processes. They have rules and they have structure. We often rely on the work that's come before us to help inspire our own. Your environment, your team and your resources are the three cornerstones of scientific success. Working in the University of Melbourne, and particular Melbourne Biomedical Precinct, gives you all three. You have world-leading scientists, even Nobel Prize winners, in the offices next year. There are multi-million dollar instruments at your fingertips. There are very few places in the world, never mind Australia, that have such scientific muscle. At the School of Biomedical Sciences, we think big. If you bring curiosity, we will match it with technology and innovation to help address the greatest global health challenges of our time. <laughs>